Welcome back to my kitchen. Today we are making karage, and that is basically a Japanese fried chicken nugget. You'll love it. <laughs> well, my wife doesn't love it, but <laughs> you might love it. You'll probably love it. It's delicious. The first thing we need to do is to grate some ginger. I found this enormous hunk of fresh ginger at my grocery store. Normally I can't get anything this big, but I got lucky. So I'm going to peel this. I thought about just cutting it off and squaring it up, but I just, I couldn't Oh man, this smells good. I didn't, I couldn't bear the thought of wasting any of it. Oh, this is so juicy too. I, this must've just come off the truck today. I'm excited. <laughs> I haven't had cry in a while. And, oh, thank you. Well, I don't, I, I do have an answer for that, and I'm making it. I don't think I've ever had ginger this fresh. Oh, it smells wonderful. You may recognize this cutting board. It is from a previous video. I'm using the back of it. This is that Val board. And I have my microplaner. This is... I don't know who makes this. It's just it says microplane on it. I'm going to plane it right into the bowl. Let's see how that works. I need a tablespoon. It seems like a lot if you're microplaning. Hopefully, I don't microplane my thumb. Oh boy, there's nothing's coming off here. Well, very little. Maybe I should use a, oh, it's kind of coming off in a slush. I was wondering if I should just use a regular grater for this. Now we're ready. You know, oh, I'm going to use that uh, knife glove so I, you may have seen this in a previous video. This is making me nervous. This is, nothing's coming off here. All right. That's better. There is stuff. We have ginger. Normally what I do, instead of grating ginger, is I just stick it in a little food processor I have from Ninja, and it just grinds it right up. I should have done that. I don't know why I didn't. More grating. Surely this has to be enough. Yeah, that's easily a tablespoon, probably a little more. And that's okay because the recipe calls for one and a half pounds of chicken. This is almost two pounds of chicken. So if I have a little more ginger, I think it'll be okay. But that is specifically why my wife doesn't like this, I think, because she's not a fan of ginger. But uh, I, I don't know if she'll eat this anyway, so I'm not going to worry about it. Next, I need to mince two cloves of garlic and I'll be using my faithful Galliardo garlic peeler because it's fun and mostly reliable. That's all, it almost got it. Let's take it back in for just a little bit. There we go. You can hear when it cracks. That's one peeled. This one's a little smaller. I think it does better with the larger cloves, but it should still work. Oh yeah. That's two cloves of garlic. 
going to wash off the cutting board and get uh, set the Gallardo aside. What I like about this cutting board is it has these rubber feet. Doesn't mean it won't slip at all, obviously, but it's less slippery. Just, oh, <laughs> the whole reason why I'm doing this video, I'm reviewing the Wang Mozzie seven inch Sotoku knife. This is solid steel, including the handle. I think it's just one piece, which I like. And it doesn't say, but I suspect it should be okay in the dishwasher. Normally, they, uh, normally I don't put my knives in the dishwasher because I don't want to wreck the handle, but I don't see how you possibly can. It's one piece. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to put it in the dishwasher. I don't like washing dishes. So it, yes, this is the first time I'll be using the Wang Mozzie knife. I plan to use it for the garlic and the chicken. And I will be using this also later. I'm, I'll be making some um, uh, bone broth, beef bro bone broth. So we'll, we'll be giving it a workout today. Just want to cut off the nub at the end of the garlic. And just slice it thin. Normally I like to use the ulu blade for mincing because it's fun. But since I'm testing this knife today, oh, it's just really sharp. I'm going to put this knife back or this uh, glove back on. Um, since I'm testing this knife today, I will use this for all of the process. This is super sharp, but it's a brand new knife. I suppose all brand new knives are sharp when you first get them. I do have a knife sharpener. I keep my knives extra sharp. This cutting board is really loud. Probably because of the rubber feet. I think this is doing pretty well for mincing. doesn't say how fine to mince the garlic but it's going in a marinade so I, um, probably as fine as you want to or as fine as you can on it I could probably turn this into a slurry and it would be best but it's not what we're doing today we are mincing That is a pretty fine mince there. I'll show it to this camera. <laughs> this, I'm testing a two camera system today. That is uh, an Akazo act, action camera. And oh, I, I might as well mention as long as I'm talking about it, I'm, I am testing a Ito 10 heavy duty light stand tripod, which I'm using for the action camera. Um, so far, I like the tripod. <laughs> it seems to be holding, it's not really a challenge to hold up an action camera because it's so light, but I thought it was a good use for it. To finish off the marinade, I need to add three tablespoons of soy sauce. I love this measuring cup.
and two tablespoons of sake. I don't use a lot of sake. I certainly don't like the taste of it. I don't know if it ever goes bad. It probably does, but uh, that's what I have. So that's what I'll be using. And it says to use a three quarter tablespoon of sugar. But like I said, uh, I'm already using more chicken. So I'm just going to use an entire tablespoon of sugar. Oh, what the heck? There's sugar. It's junk in my sugar. All right. A tablespoon of sugar. I'm not the only one that uses this sugar. <clears throat> And an eighth teaspoon of salt, which an eighth teaspoon, why bother? But that's what it says. You know, I think I'm going to add another tablespoon of soy sauce just to. use that, that extra chicken. And if I'm going to do that, maybe I need an extra, <laughs> extra tablespoon of sake. It's not an exact science, right? Regardless of what I do, it should be in the same flavor family. And then I just need to whisk this together. Oh man, I made a mess. Hope I didn't get any on my shirt. Marinade is done. Now I'm going to cut up the chicken. Let me just wipe this off. It says trim and cut the chicken into one inch wide strips. And basically, we're making chicken nuggets, so do whatever you want. But um, the key is you need to, the, the, the flavor is all coming from the marinade. So you don't want big chunks because then it won't absorb the marinade. Just trimming off the fat there. Yeah, it's a pretty lean piece. One inch strips, and I'm cutting against the grain here. Again, using the Wang Mazi Santoku knife. I don't know what Santoku means, but um, look, it, just look at the shape of the blade. It has a slight curve at the tip. Um, but it, it's different than, let me get like, uh, here's, here's a normal chef's knife, obviously bigger, but see how the, the shape of the blade is different. This is more of a flat rectangular blade. And this has a distinct curve on the end. This only has a slight curve on the end. Um, so that's that's why I like to experiment with different knives. Is I, I don't know what they're best suited for. This also has a distinct handle shape. It's uh, very angular. And I, I wasn't sure I would like it. But it seems to be working all right. I should have frozen the chicken a little bit first because it's very pliable and therefore harder than it needs to be. Now I 
think I think this knife would do much better if my chicken was frozen or partially frozen, you know, just a little stiffer. It's, it's I think the knife is doing fine. It's a chicken that's sli sliding around. And um, so I've got this long strip of chicken and I'm going to cut it more into nugget sized pieces. And again, the more surface area you have, the better it's going to absorb that marinade. And these are actually a little thick, but should be all right. This needs a little trim. Half done. Now these thicker pieces, I think I'm going to cut in half. When I marinate chicken, I like to put it in a vacuum seal bag just because then I can more easily manipulate it and spread the marinade around as needed. So I've got one here. And my vacuum sealer does not do well with liquids. I don't know. I don't have a chamber vacuum sealer, so I'm not actually going to vacuum seal it. I'm just going to squeeze the air out and manually seal it. But that'll be fine for my purposes. I'm just going to wash my hands quick and we'll be right back. I am using the Nesco vacuum sealer to seal up this bag of chicken. I don't know if they sell this anymore. I got this years ago, but if they do, I'll put a link in the description. But before I seal it up, I need to add this marinade first. It would be unfortunate if I forgot that step. And then I'm just squeezing the air out as much as I can. And I will stick this in here. And again, I'm not vacuum sealing. I am just, I am putting a manual seal on this. And that is done. I'm going to double seal it just to be safe. And this is done. Now I'm just going to massage the marinade into the chicken with the assurance that it's not going to leak because of my double seal. While this chicken is marinating, I'm going to put it on a baking sheet and stick it in the refrigerator until I'm ready to use it. After the chicken marinates for 30 minutes, I have to take it out of the refrigerator and then dip it into cornstarch and then the cornstarch will absorb all the excess marinade and then we'll be ready to fry but we got a ways to wait we, there's still 26 minutes on the counter so I'm going to turn the camera off and we'll be right back since we're about to get messy I'm going to need an apron and I'm using a new apron today it's by a company I'm not sure I can pronounce because there aren't that many vowels in it I think it's Vamch, Vamch, 
I don't know. It is a waterproof rubber vinyl apron, which I'm kind of excited about because I've wanted something like this for a while, just because with oil and liquids, the traditional fabric aprons don't give me the protection that I, that I don't want anything on my shirts. So I think this apron will help me feel at ease. And one thing I like about this is it's got a, an adjustable collar, of course, but it also has a um, buckle, or I don't know what you want to call this, but it comes apart like this and then snaps back in. So you don't have to keep adjusting the size every time. Adjust it once and, you, and you're done. <laughs> Just realize I covered up the mic. Just realized I covered up the microphone here. So, uh, I'll set that there for now. And I will put it there. How's that sound? Hopefully good. I need to open this bag of chicken. I'm going to use my poultry shears from a previous video. And I don't want to discard the liquid because you actually end up using it if there are dry spots in your cornstarch batter. So I will carefully open this. Somewhat carefully. And then just start dipping the chicken into the cornstarch. They say that you do it one piece at a time, I guess, to make sure you do a good job. I don't know. That's what they say. You just want to put it in the cornstarch and I guess I'll keep a dry hand to put cornstarch on top of the chicken. Or maybe I should move this over. I don't know if, the, if this little camera over here can see what I'm doing, but I put a piece of chicken in there and then I'm just shaking off the excess. So you want it well coated, but you don't want too much cornstarch on there. And we are letting this rest on some parchment paper. So we'll do that again about a thousand times. Piece of chicken into the cornstarch. Use the dry hand to throw cornstarch on top. Pat it down. So make sure it's coated but not excess. And put it on the parchment paper. I don't know if you can see it, but the cornstarch is already absorbing the excess liquid and that's exactly what we want. I think by the time we are done, the cornstarch will be completely absorbed. But that's, if it's not, then that's what you use the extra liquid for. You want, you don't want to taste cornstarch, you want to taste the marinade. I know this is somewhat of a tedious process, but it's so good. All right, the chicken is all coated. If you can see this tray, it looks like it's well on the way to being absorbed by the marinade. I had just increased the temperature a little bit, so I'm going to give it a few minutes yet. While I'm waiting for that, I am going to touch up the dry spots with a little bit of this marinade liquid. I'm just, I'm just dropping it. Just, I wouldn't even call it a drizzle. I'm just adding droplets. So 
I just don't want my karage to taste like cornstarch. Ooh, a little too much there. Well, we'll hope for the best. 324, 325, we're golden. I'm just going to lay the chicken in the oil in a single layer. And they say cook for four to five minutes. Maybe one more. This is going to be amazing. Krage, so good. Just giving it a stir to make sure that nothing is sticking. And, and I, honestly, I can't tell if anything's sticking to each other, but I know it's not sticking to the pan, so that's one good thing. I'm going to take it out. And that is karagi. I'm just putting it on a wire rack to drain the oil. And this tastes fantastic, hot or cold. I've had this the next day and it is so good. Now make sure the oil is back up to 325 while I'm waiting. I got a sample, right? Oh, this is, this is super hot. <laughs> I'll sample it a little bit. All right, while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to do the drizzle on the second tray. That looks pretty good. All right, that looks good. Set the timer. See if I can have a sample yet. Hmm. That is really good. They suggest putting lemon juice on it. I don't know if I've ever tried that. I think I've made this probably three. This is probably my fourth time. Four minutes are up. I'm guessing we have three or four batches left. I don't want to be here all day. I just want to have some more chicken. And the dog is actually being really good. Not a peep. I don't know if this is true about every induction cooktop, but there seems to be a hot spot right in the middle of the burner. I've tried different pans. I don't think it's the pan and it's not I've tried things other than cast iron, so it's not just the cast iron. I think it is the induction cooktop. Maybe that's how they're designed. I don't know. I prefer gas, but this uh, stove behind me is electric, and I, I don't really have any main... Oh, that's hot. I got a little oil splash. I don't have too many complaints about the electric other than it's difficult to clean. I don't know if that's common for all electrics or just this flat top 
ceramic thing. Now set the timer again. Just another sample, I think. I've earned it. This one, the chicken's a little thicker than the, the first sample I had. And I like this one better. It is juicier. In the future, I think that I will try for about half inch thick or a shorter cook time. Let's get this batch out. Three twenty-five. I don't know if I can get this all in one batch, but we'll try. I'm putting the thicker pieces in first. Technically, it's probably getting a little crowded in there, but I don't really want to do another batch. It's getting a little crowded. Hopefully, they won't stick together. It is more crowded, but it seems to be handling it well enough. So I'm not too worried about it, or not worried about it at all, actually. I'm more worried that there won't be enough room left on this rack. Well, while this is cooking, let me talk about the apron. Uh, obviously, I haven't splashed on myself, so it's probably not a uh, extreme case. I probably could have used a regular cloth apron and be just as happy. And but. The point is, I'm not, I don't even have to worry about it. Yes, I am always careful, but things happen. And if I have this thing on, I don't have to worry about oil splashing on me as much as if I did with a, uh, a cloth apron. So I, I like this. And they say you just, you can just wipe it clean. And I, I mean, this is, yeah. Cornstarch is corn starch is messy and it just falls right off this. It's on the floor now, but that's why you have a dog, right? <laughs> um, so I do like the Vamched waterproof rubber vinyl apron. And it, it suits me well. I like I said, I like this little buckle thing here. That allows me to take it on and off very easily without having to adjust the size of the neck. Ties easily, fits well, gives me the protection I need, and the assurance that the oil is not going to get on me. And I, I like I do like that. There is a measure of comfort in reducing my anxiety. So sounds like the chicken's done. And this is the last batch. Just turn off the induction cooktop, let that thing cool down. And this all looks fantastic. And it's late. It's almost two o'clock and we haven't had lunch yet. But, so this is going to be delicious. And like I said, I don't know what kind of sauce you'd put on here, but I don't think it needs sauce. It's just delicious the way it is. So thanks for stopping by. I like the knife. I like the apron. And uh, I like the tripod too. Although I don't think you get to see that. Uh, maybe it'll show up in some other format. See you next time.